after the connection of loading arms, air should be purged from the loading arms and the tips of manifold pipes. N2 gas is introduced into the loading arms from injection lines connected to the arms, and then pressurize up to the allowable limit. After pressurization, the ship's liquid manifold vent valve and vapor manifold vent slash drain valve are opened to release air and N2 gas into the atmosphere. While this operation is repeated two or three times, a leak test with soap solution is conducted at the same time. Air purge comes to an end when the oxygen content of the purged gas has dropped below 2%. The cooldown of the loading arms is performed from shoreside by use of a small capacity pump. At a discharge port, the arms are cooled down by sending an LNG by ship's spray pump. Prior to commencing the loading operation the cargo pipelines have to be cooled. The primary reasons for cooling the cargo lines are to minimize the possibility of leaks being created at joints with valves or other sections of pipeline as they contract when cargo is passed. To reduce the possibility of sudden shock loadings on bellows as pipes contract rapidly. To avoid the formation of vapor locks in the pipelines when cargo is introduced. If LNG is introduced into a warm pipeline the initial cargo will vaporize, create a large pressure that can block the loading of the liquid. It is then possible that this vapor will then condense very rapidly as the temperature reduces below the condensation point, allowing the liquid to surge along the pipeline possibly resulting in damage to the pipelines, valves or connections. Cool down is achieved by introducing LNG to the tanks via the two spray rails slash rings in each cargo tank. The method used for cooling the cargo tanks depends on the operating condition of the ship. Tanks can be cooled just before arrival at the loading terminal. A quantity of LNG heel not exceeding 10% of tank length is retained in on cargo tank on completion of discharge. The cargo tanks are kept cold by periodically spraying the tanks with LNG to maintain minus 120 C to minus 130 C inside the tanks. Expected boil off rates for heel quantities are 50%. Cool down of the cargo tanks can also be done with LNG supplied from ashore. The normal amount of cargo left on board, after discharge, on a membrane tanker is sufficient for the tanker to arrive load ready, after a short voyage. The level must never be above 10% of the length of the tank. A boil off rate around 0.18% per day should be anticipated. The aim should be to arrive at the load port with at least 10 centimeters of liquid spread evenly over the whole surface of the tank bottom vessel even keel. Actual quantities will be worked out after a few voyages. With this method, the tank bottom temperature should be minus 150 C, and the top minus 50 C, the tank is load ready. LNG is loaded via the loading manifolds to the liquid header and then to each tank filling line. The boil off and displaced vapor leave each tank via the vapor suction to the vapor header. The vapor is initially free flowed to shore via the vapor crossover manifold and, as tank pressure rises, one compressor is brought into operation to increase the gas flow to shore and limit the vapor main and cargo tank pressure. As the loading rate increases, it is important to monitor the tank pressures and to start one HD compressor. If the compressors are unable to cope with the volume of boil off and displaced gas, it will be necessary to reduce the loading rate. As a general rule, LNG membrane tanks maintain levels higher than 80% of the height of the tank or lower than 10% of the length of the tank.